Kilkenny Castle today stands dramatically on a strategic height that commands a crossing on the River Nore and dominates the high town of Kilkenny City. Over the eight centuries of its existence, many additions and alterations have been made to the fabric of the building, making Kilkenny Castle today a complex structure of various architectural styles. The original Anglo-Norman stone castle was built by William Marshall, the fourth Earl of Pembroke, during the first decade of the 13th century. This would have replaced an earlier wooden structure erected here in the 1170s by his father-in-law, Richard de Clare Strongbow, the leader of the Anglo-Norman invasion. Kilkenny Castle later became the principal Irish residence of the powerful Butler family, the Earls of Ormond, for almost 600 years. James, the third Earl of Ormond, often referred to as the Earl of Goran, purchased the castle in 1391 from the absentee owners, the dispensers. The Butler family retained ownership of the building until 1967, when Arthur, the 24th Earl and 6th Marquess of Ormond, presented it to the people of Kilkenny with the surrounding parkland for a token payment of £50. The structure has been in the care of the Office of Public Works since 1969 and many important programmes of archaeological excavation, conservation and restoration have been carried out. The terrace corridor is down a short flight of steps and under the garden terrace. On the left, a passage cut through the north curtain wall leads into a small cellar where the curved shape of the adjoining tower projects into the room. Excavations here reveal the foundations of a 16th century Tudor building, probably built by Thomas, the 10th Earl of Ormond, and beneath that again, a medieval sod house. The medieval foundations show clearly the sally port, a secure door in the base of the castle where troops could make surprise attacks called sallies on an enemy without compromising the security of the castle. The undercroft, a circular chamber, the massive depth of the 13 walls can be seen clearly. Within the walls are two plunging arrow loops slit windows which allowed an archer to shoot at attackers outside. On the ceiling is an example of willow wicker centering. This is left over from the wicker structure that was used to support the vault during construction. The impressive 19th century mahogany staircase was designed and made by the local firm of Orr Furness and Son the Parade Kilkenny. It leads up to the doorway of the tapestry room, the North Tower, where it turns to give access to the first floor. Today, a rather beautiful selection of paintings, portraits and landscapes from the Ormond Picture Collection decorate the walls. The ante room. This small chamber or waiting room was once connected to the room below by an earlier stone staircase. Guests may have been formally announced here on arrival. The library. The interior decoration here is a faithful recreation of the furnishing style of the mid to late 19th century. Thanks to a fabric remnant found behind a skirting board, the French silk poplin on the walls was reproduced in its original pattern and colour by Prel of Lyon. The claret silk damask curtains 
in the pomegranate pattern, also based on original designs, uh, were made in Ireland. One of the nine massive curtain palmets is original, and an Irish firm of master guilders faithfully reproduced matching gilt reproductions. The bookcases were reproduced by local craftsmen, Thielen Brothers of Kilkenny, based on one original bookcase, which is now at the right end corner of the library. A large mirror over the mantelpiece has been carefully restored and regilded. Fireplaces of 18th and 19th century Italian marble, also original, are restored in these rooms. The Berber style floor carpet in the library is based on patterns adopted from Izmir motifs. The restoration team found the original receipt for the carpet in the family papers and were able to trace the company who had kept the design records, the firm of Woodward Grosvenor, who had produced the originals and so reproduced the same design. The drawing room. This room has been furnished in the same period style as the library. On the west wall is the striking group portrait of the five eldest children of Charles I, dating from the mid 17th century by an unknown artist after the original by the Flemish painter, Sir Anthony van Dyck, which is now in the Royal Collection. And other interesting surviving paintings from the original Ormond Collection are displayed here, including two 18th century portraits, believed to be by Robert Hunter of the 16th Earl of Ormond, Walter Butler, and his wife, Eleanor Morris. And a rather beautiful representation of the mystical marriage of St. Catherine on the opposite wall, which became part of the picture collection in the 19th century. A rather elegant tea poi or chest with its compartments for varieties of tea leaf is an interesting item displayed here. The Long Gallery of Kilkenny Castle. The gallery was built in the early 19th century by the architect William Robertson and was constructed on earlier foundations. Robertson's picture gallery, in keeping with his work on the rest of the castle, was in castellated baronial style. It was initially built with a flat roof that began to cause problems shortly after completion. The distinguished architectural firm of Dean and Woodward it was called in during the 1860s to make changes to the overall design of the picture gallery and other corrections to Robertson's work. These changes included the insertion of four oriel windows in the west wall and the blocking up of the eight existing windows, while another oriel was added to the east wall. By the 1860s, the leaking flat roof had been replaced by a pitched hammer beam structure with central glazing of green glass. The unique roof by Dean and Woodward is supported on carved stone corbels of Portland stone by Charles Harrison. The entire ceiling was hand painted by John Hungerford Pollen, then Professor of Fine Arts at Newman's College, the Catholic University Dublin, using a combination of motifs ranging from the quasi-medieval to the pre-Raphaelite, with the interlaced gilded animal and bird heads on the cross beams. The Brussels tapestries of the story of Decius Mus, circa 1630, three of which are in the Long Gallery today, are attributed to the workshop of Jan Rice, after designs by Sir Peter Paul Rubens. These Decius series of tapestries had been in the ownership of the butlers of Ormond for over 300 years and were recorded hanging in the dining room of Dunmore House in 1684. The tapestries may well have been sent to London after that date, as they do not appear in later inventories, but are mentioned by visitors to the castle from the early 19th century. Designs for the tapestries were carried out 
circa 1616-1617 by Sir Peter Paul Rubens. And it appears that originally seven of these great works existed, with six remaining today. The Butler family left Kilkenny Castle in 1935 and moved to a smaller residence. Prior to vacating the castle, an auction was held with the contents of the castle being sold off in November of 1935. The castle remained unoccupied for almost 30 years, except for a brief period during the Second World War when it acted as a military base. Lack of heating and the movement of time began to take its toll, and by the 1960s the castle was in a rather decrepit state. The pristine condition and high level of maintenance in which the castle is in today is thanks to a three-phased project of conservation and restoration overseen by the Office of Public Works in recent decades. The adjacent parkland and rose garden are wonderful amenities for both visitors from the locality and further afield, and greatly enhance the visit of so many who come to view this great Anglo-Norman structure. We hope you enjoyed this brief visit and that, that it has whet your appetite for a future discovery of what lies hidden behind the walls of this great castle. <laughs>